We go from North America to South America, because in Brazil, the seventh largest country in the world, there is a growing movement to boycott not just Israeli companies, but Jewish businesses. Brazil is run, you might know this, by a leftist president named, nicknamed Lula. And one of the most influential members of Lula's party, Jose Genoino, has had this to say last week. Essa ideia da rejeição. This idea of rejection, the idea of boycott for political reasons hurting economic interests, it's an interesting form of protest. By the way, there is this boycott targeting some Jewish businesses. There are also boycotts to companies related to the state of Israel, and I think Brazil should cut the commercial relations in the security and military sectors with the state of Israel. I'm joined live now by Kim Kataguri. He is the Brazilian congressman of the Brazil Union Party. He's also a founding member of the Free Brazil Movement. He's joined me from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Thank you so much, Kim, for joining us. Bom dia. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak. Also, apologize for any mistakes in my vocabulary or pronunciation since I'm not a native speaker, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. No, no problem. No problem at all. Um, let's talk a little bit about Brazil. I lived in Brazil. I, I know for sure Brazil has, has an extremely large Jewish community. It's the 10th largest in the world. There's about 120,000 uh, Jews who live in Brazil, especially Sao Paulo. Are they safe right now? Well, that's not uh, very clear right now. I mean, I would say they uh, are, were safe like two years ago, but right now I think uh, anti-Semitism in Brazil is rising. We just You just showed uh, the words from José Genuino, which is a very uh, powerful Brazilian politician. And this is racism. This is uh, openly anti-Semitism. This is a hatred for Jews, something we would not think uh, to live with that in Brazil like two or three years ago we always thought we were a plural and peaceful community that is open for everybody that is open for immigrants that is open for every religion and uh, it's very uh, scary to see uh, this kind of thing happening in our country last week uh, I filed a legal action against José Genuino for racism and since we just saw he advocated for a boycott of Jewish companies simply based on the ethnic origin of their owners. And it's kind of the attitude of what we've seen in the beginning of Nazism and other, also other times in history with uh, other races like in apartheid and also in racist, racist movements in the United States in the 1960s. So uh, it's, it's very scary to see this happening in our country. And I think uh, it's it's, it's exactly what uh, I just heard there, that the far left and the far right, they meet in the in the hatred for Jews, and this is also happening in Brazil, unfortunately. Kim, I, let's give a little bit of a, of a class as to where Brazil fits into all this, and I'll tell you what I'm looking for from you. The, the tempo, the temperature has been this way because uh, of the far left that secured power in Brazil, that Lula, who is the president, uh, is coming from the far left. Uh, just talk, give us a little bit of a, of, a, of a history lesson as to how anti-Semitism has, has risen through the left in Brazil. Well, the, the position of the left in Brazil uh, puts its own values in question because it's highly inconsistent for this ideological field that claims, or at least claims, to be a defender of uh, gay movements, women's rights, political and religious freedom, uh, to position itself opposite in the only country uh, in the Middle East where all of these values are guaranteed. I mean, I've been in Israel last year, and I can say it's an island of democracy and an ocean of tyrannies. So if these leftists that uh, got in power uh, talking about democracy, talking about uh, tolerance, talking about minorities and uh, uh, human rights, they seem not to care about the Jewish human rights. They seem not to care just because uh, uh, it, they do not consider the Jews uh, a minority. They do not consider the Jews as uh, human beings that should be uh, uh, defended like any other, like they say, they, they claim they defend, uh, uh, as I said, uh, women's rights, uh, uh, gays' rights, and political and religious freedom, but this do not seem to apply to Jewish people. And that's that's scary just because they say, OK, so uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is a far right uh, 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 prime minister, so we should not support any any 
actions of Israel, even if it's just defending itself against a cruel and brutal terrorist attack. I mean, just because of uh, uh, Benjamin's political position, you would not stand for the Jews to defend themselves, to defend their lives. I mean, it, to me, it makes absolutely no sense. Well, well, let's also tell the viewers how the Brazil has supported the ICJ court case of South Africa versus Israel. And how Brazil also, the judge in the Brazilian case, in this case, the Brazilian judge voted in favor of all of the conditions that were that were ruled yesterday. And, it, and as part of a larger picture of the, the, the BRICS country, or the Global South, as it's called in the United Nations, that Brazil constantly votes against Israel in the Security Council. Yeah, it's a shame for me that Brazil uh, stands against Israel. I mean, uh, historically, we are, as I said, a democracy, a country of tolerance, a plural country, and now we're standing against the self-defense right of Israel. I mean, uh, both the genocide and Geneva uh, Convention were made with an uh, international system in mind where the main actors are states, but that's not the case. I mean, in recent decades, in recent decades, uh, states have ceased to have such uh, a prominent role and uh, some organizations, including terrorist ones like Hamas, have become the protagonists of security issues. But Hamas is not a state. This complicates everything, uh, whether from a military, political, or a legal standpoint. But anyway, one thing is ab absolutely certain and clear for me. All parties in conflict, they must observe humanitarian law very strictly. The main rules to avoid uh, the suffering for civilians. But the problem is, this rule is very difficult to apply. I mean, Hamas does not have an army. It's a terrorist group that blends in uh, with the local population, and they seem to use humanitarian laws to use humans as shields and uh, use uh, the, the media and the United Nations to put the word against Israel. And unfortunately, Brazil seems to be playing Hamas game and uh, by in by Hamas rules. I mean, it's very convenient to go to the uh, International Court of Justice because they only have jurisdiction over states. But as I said, Hamas is not a state. So you have a conflict where one party answers to the court and the other cannot. Oh, uh, Kim, I'm just going to ask you a question in terms of the, the irony of this all, because you're, you're, uh, in Brazil has an issue with the Amazonians, who, the, the people who live in the Amazon, uh, the Amazon, by the Amazon forest, and also in the north of, of, of Brazil in terms of racism. And so it seems very ironic that this occurs. Yeah, exactly. And also, uh, it's coming from a president, like I said, he... Uh, uh, he's rising to power. He's back in power because he said he would defend democracy, because he said he would stand for human rights. And that's not we are, what we're seeing. And I think one more thing is important for me to say that, uh, unfortunately, this uh, support of Brazil uh, uh, in the South Africa uh, against uh, Israel in the International Court of Justice, this position of the Brazilian government is not the position of the Brazilian parliament. Most of the, the um, I mean, I'm an opposition representative, but even uh, government representatives in the parliament, they do not uh, stand for this position uh, against Israel. I mean, most, uh, we approved last year uh, a motion just to support Israel and its right to self-defense. And it had the more than 300 votes. We are in a five, 113 uh, members of the, the parliament, and it had the support of the majority, even of representatives that usually vote uh, with the government, which which are uh, Lula supporters. So right. this position for me is absolutely uh, unreasonable, even from a political perspective here in Brazil. Kim, I hope that the folks in, in Higienopolis and Hio and in Hesife, all are the, the Jewish community there feel safe. And so thank you very much for joining us uh, live from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Kim Katagiri, the Brazilian congressman and also a Brazilian Union Party member, uh, the founding member of Free Brazil Movement. Thank you again for joining us. And bon dia. Once again, and thank you for the opportunity. And bon dia.
Pessoal, é fundamental para você que acredita, que segue, que tem os nossos valores e princípios do Movimento Brasil Livre, que você entre no Clube MBL, não só para ter acesso a todas as vantagens do clube, mas principalmente para apoiar o grande projeto que nós temos para o nosso país e vocês sabem de que projeto eu estou falando. É só você clicar aqui nesse link que você vai poder ajudar o MBL e vai poder fazer parte dessa luta.